بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه اللهم ربنا تقبل طاعتنا اللهم تقبل طاعتنا اللهم واجعلنا من عتقائك من النيران في هذا الشهر الكريم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our worship and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free us from the doom of the hellfire in this blessed month. From the ayat that we have recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that it's going to be signs and these great signs of the day of judgment. يَوْمَ يَأْتِي بَعْضُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكَ لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا when these signs appears, if someone didn't believe yet, his belief will not benefit him at all at that time. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the opportunity of time to take advantage of the time because the time is your life. When you look at the clock, that is your life. The way how the time is passing, the five minutes pass, the hour passes, and so on, that is your life. It's going to come a time when you cannot postpone anymore. And if, actually, um, that opportunity to postpone is for us today because we are alive, that something might happen that one will be regretting that time that he had wasted. If someone will come, subhanAllah, hit by death or stabbed by death, that's it. There is no way out and there is no way to come back. That's everyone is going to say that because they have they wasted their life in things, a future thing and away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned is a universal sign that when the sun will come from the west. The scholar is reporting from the hadith that is the coming up of the sun from the west. And the Prophet ﷺ was give them the description and the details of such a thing, how it's going to be. You know, the sun will be not rising for a while, and then when it rises, it rises from the west. When it comes at that time, if anyone who wants to become believer is too late, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ac not accept the repentance of people at the time. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your repentance as long as you don't come to the point of the agony of death. And he will accept your repentance as long as the sun does not rise from the west. And if you're still alive at that time. Therefore, the believer has a responsibility of managing his time. And the time then is going to put it based on a priority how he's going to manage this time. And the management of the time of the believer is to put the highest priority is to deepen his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the highest of the priority of the day must be the prayer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you a way how you manage your time and you make your schedule to be rotating and pivoting around the prayer as is the most important part of your time and most important part of your daily activities because between every prayer you are cleansing the sins between every prayer you are helping yourself in every prayer you're getting the energy to go back to the life and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be protecting you from the day to the night because you were thinking and reminding and mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, to do such a thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayat in Surah Al-An'am, He taught and instructed His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسِكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِ Therefore, not any more about the management of time, how I'm going to use my time, and how I'm going to devote this time for Allah, and devote this time for my prayer, and then I have my work, I have my joyful time, no, that's not, it does not work like that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah instructing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قَالَ قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي My prayer, my nusuki, my sacrifice, and all the worship that we do is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Mahyaya wa mamati. My way of life, my way of living, my way of dying is all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must be present and observed in every aspect of your life. Then when death hits, when the sun comes or any of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appears, you are already on a state of belief. That's why some of the companions of Allah ta'ala alayhim and from the Salaf, they used to say, if I will know that tomorrow I'm going to die, I don't think I have anything to add in my action. I will not be able to add anything. So subhanallah, they fill their time with all what is required to be the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, uh, when we're connecting the ayat together and the surahs with the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, which is the surah that we're going to read in the second part of the Taraweeh, Surah Al-A'raf, something very important. Because your way of life and your way of dying, and this is very, uh, you know, uh, wise when you think about it. And when I said every aspect need to be observed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that everything you do, even your entertainment, see if it's halal or not. See that is going to help you in the ultimate purpose of your life. To have a successful job is good. To have successful study is good. But the base of it is not seeking for fame, is not seeking for to be arrogant, is not seeking to be boastful. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you from favor of this dunya, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in this life for you to enjoy it and is going to be free in the day of judgment, meaning Allah will not hold you accountable of any of the gift he gave you because you being a servant to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that's his bounty over you and upon you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, when you do such a thing, you will live a life of a joyful person, of a peaceful person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised every believer who acts in righteousness and in, on the base of the belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him to live a joyful life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So this is the promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who else other than Allah can fulfill his promise subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what really uh, is uh, tricking us, what really is diverting us from the remembrance of Allah, what diverting us is things that are embedded in us. Because in the next surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story of Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam representing the whole humanity and the whole humankind when he was in paradise. And the sharia for Adam, it was one single one single, uh, subhanallah, uh, doing is like eat from all the Jannah, do not eat from this tree. That's the Sharia, that's our Sharia. That the whole Sharia is about, about like do and do not. Do eat, this is permissible. Allah created everything in this life for you to enjoy it, to consume it, to have it, be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, that these three, four, five, six items are haram. And haram for you to protect you, to safeguard you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Adam, be aware of this. Now the shaitan that you do not see, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's observing you, that he's seeing you, that he's around you, that he's circulating into your blood, is like he's circulating inside you like the blood does. So they are there subhanallah, all their purpose from the shayateen is to take you to hellfire. That innama is a day to hasr, which is mean the whole purpose of the life of the shaitan, Iblis and his soldier, is to cast you in hellfire. But he does not have any power over you. He does not have any power over you. There's no shaitan who's going to lock you in the room and he will force you to do the haram. However, the thing that is very important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this ayah that we need to be aware of how can you manage your time and how can you make every aspect of your life observe within the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know this very secret. So the secret is the shaitan does not force you. However, the shaitan will tempt you and tempt you about things that it might seem halal to you. So what he did to add, what he did to add, there is subhanallah two aspects. The aspect that 
you want to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال, look what he said uh, shaitan he told him قال, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want you to eat from this tree not because he will be angry at you but actually because uh, if you eat from it you're gonna be like the angels and you're going to be live for eternity two element in us today we suffer from it this motivation dreams you want to be always in a better position and you look at those who are in higher position than you even alhamdulillah as the righteousness and when you root our self in higher position that's a great role model but when someone looking at someone singer or someone actor fame and everything and they want or player they want to be like them that's the wrong role model to take but this is embedded in us to be aspiring and to want to be something better so Adam alayhi salam seeing the angel closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's greater thing than to be like the angel you see how the trick then the second thing to live for eternity I'm going to live in this jannah and uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so is all nasiha so what the shaitan was presenting is nasiha but was taken advantage of something that we already have embedded with us we love to live forever but it's not in this life in the year after we want to be in the higher position but this is might not be fulfilled here Allah will grant it to you if you admit to in his mercy and this is subhanallah the balance therefore he they have been tricked Adam and Hawa by something that they had and today subhanallah in the society that exactly what they are doing they are using your own desire the thing that embedded in you you like subhanallah people they want to be immortal then well that's why the plastic surgery is very successful people they don't want to get aged that's why all this industry people they want to be like look better than other that's why the fashion the you know industry is working and you see it subhanallah this marketing this entertainment even in the movies that you see and what our youth most of them they love the avenger and everything they took things that everybody loves people all these people always they saving the world so by nature we love the one who has courage by nature we love bravery by nature we love generosity so when they put this generosity into some you know person or like personage and persona and then what they do it becomes subhanallah our way to trick us and deviate us so this person want to change the world and he had the ability as they show him in a virtual uh, life and then what is happened this person is drinking alcohol this person is dating this person is doing all the haram so bad he's doing all this great thing so all that haram becomes halal why because we want to be like that person so this is exactly what iblis alayhi salam Allah. it's good to laugh huh? this is iblis that's what he put make my tongue as as circulating in my blood to say alayhi salam no <laughs> of course <laughs> when he was before was alayhi salam but now la'anahullah <laughs> la'anatan ila yawm al-deen so this is what he's doing as he did exactly so when you take this scene in a very small you know let's say uh, in a small arena which is Adam and Hawa and the shaitan Today we have this whole humanity and the shayateen that is the same thing. That's why the Quran is the pure light. That is the Quran is your guidance. You just look, look how he did for them and he's keeping doing the same to you and to others. That's why when you look, you said, I better submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and develop as what we have said, that attentive ear. So when I listen to Allah, I'll obey and I know in the obedience of Allah I'm going to block the shaitan I'm going to block the cunning of the shaitan I'm going to know better myself and then by knowing better myself I will be able as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed his prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to make my salat for Allah to make my sacrifice to Allah 
to make my way of living to Allah and my way of dying, which is very mysterious when you say my way of dying, which is like today you live by making dua that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, do not take my soul only when I'm ready to meet you, ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will not cause us to die till he will be pleased with us. Allahumma ghfil lana dhunubana ajma'een wa thabbitna rabbana ala sirat al-mustakheen wa ila salati irhamukumullah.